Body language determines the outcome of business negotiations or job interviews in 60 to 80 percent. Research shows that the vast majority of what we convey when we talk to people is instinctive. And as long as you call someone, words and arguments can play some role, their importance decreases significantly during a face-to-face -face meeting. Most experts who study the process of human communication believe that words are mainly used to convey information. Body language to establish more personal relationship. That's why what we see and feel play a much bigger role than spoken words. When we see someone for the first time, we immediately instinctively judge whether someone we have just met is nice, hostile, competent, intelligent or sexually attractive. This judgment is largely based on our feelings and it often all starts with the first eye contact, facial expression and first handshake. People are rarely aware that they can say one thing while their body says something completely different. All because body language reflects our emotional state, so every gesture and move express emotions and feelings. If you are talking to someone and you see that he's making rapid eyes or head movements and additionally taps his foot nervously, it's very likely that he's nervous and talking about issues that requires deeper reflection, concentration or making a thoughtful decision doesn't make any sense. That's why when you talk to someone who acts like that, the message and information should be clear and simple. In the case of salesmen, the first impression won't be positive either. If someone presents his offer and his body language reflects insecurity, even if he has the best qualifications and recommendations, most likely he won't get a client and won't close the sale. Powers of observations, or what we call intuition, is exactly the ability to read body language and compare it with the spoken words. If we feel that someone is not being honest with us, it usually means that his body language doesn't match the words he says. Body posture, gestures, facial expressions contradict the words and there's a visible lack of congruence. The ability to properly decode these signals is a trait of good negotiators, salespeople or for instance politicians. Correct interpretation allows you to assess whether the topic of conversation is interesting or boring for your listener, whether it evokes negative feelings and doubts or inspires and encourages to action. And this is crucial in sales. But to be good at reading body language, it's not enough to read individual gestures. You have to pay attention to the whole group and see a larger picture. A smile that is so well known to everyone can be triggered by a funny situation, be an expression of mockery, as well as people may smile when they feel treated or nervous. Thus the key to properly reading a group of gestures is both the nonverbal and verbal channel. Both language should always be analyzed in a broader context. The more information and details you have, the more accurately you are able to understand all the nuances and how your prospect decision-making process looks like. But the most important question is, can you consciously change your body language to be more persuasive? The answer isn't simple because on the one hand, no one can fake body language. On the other, you can improve some issues to look better and be able to confuse less experienced observers and for instance, look much more confident than you actually feel. Generally, it's impossible to fake body language because micro signals will always betray us. We have no control over our pupils of the eyes that dilate and narrow depending on our inner feelings. A sincere smile can be exposed by facial muscle tensions. However, our body posture and gesture can influence the body chemistry and thus stimulate certain feelings. The right way of walking, correct breathing and the pace of speaking can have a positive effect on our attitude. And over time, that what was at first a bit artificial and natural become our second nature. That's why everyone who is serious about self-development should always eliminate negative body language patterns and start to send more positive signals to people around. Good body language will make you a better salesperson. It will improve your image and make people feel better in your company. But remember, it's not about pretending to be someone you aren't already. It's just about adopting some positive behavioral patterns that will be consistent with your inner feelings. 
Only then your nonverbal communication will be fully authentic. At the same time, you will feel natural doing all these things and others will perceive you as a competent and honest person. The ability to read body language and awareness of your own body are the foundations of emotional intelligence and social skills. The truth is, however, that the average salesperson never really pays conscious attention to it. And that's a big mistake, because whether we realize it or not, we react more to body language than to words. Likewise, our own words are evaluated by what can be read non-verbally. Our body tells a story. Correct reading of body language requires drawing appropriate conclusions, so never judge one gesture or one expression. You need to see a bigger picture. That's why tonality and spoken words are equally important. Only then you will be able to properly read or tell that story. Let's take a look at some simple hand gestures as an example. Exposed open hands are generally considered as a gesture of sincerity. Centuries ago, open hands indicate that we are not hiding anything like a weapon and was an expression of good intentions. Keeping hands in a pocket, or generally hiding hands, is a sign that someone may not be honest, is unwilling to talk and want to live. Conversely, exposed open hands make us intuitively feel that someone tells us true. Moreover, when you talk to someone, at the time you keep your hands open, that way you encourage someone to be more honest with you. Using this one simple gesture in a conversation can make you look more authentic as well as you can give the impression of an open and honest person. When we ask someone to do something and we show the palm of our hands, it's unlikely that anyone feel threatened or offended. In this way, you send a signal that you are ready to cooperation, listening and you politely ask for something. But when you say the same and your palm is facing down, this gesture signals power and someone may feel like you are giving him an order. Depending on your private or professional relationships, this person will follow the order or not. It will be a natural reaction or you will meet with a negative response and resistance if you didn't have enough authority and power to make similar gesture. Extroverted people tend to have a firm handshake. Shy or neurotic people tend to have a loose, almost like they are reluctant to shake your hand. You can use your hands to establish dominance, mark territory, demonstrate authority or express openness and friendliness. People who want to show their dominance will shake someone's hands while keeping their own palm facing down. Shaking hands with the palm facing up means submission, or it may be deliberately behavior. You can pretend weakness in order to achieve a higher goal. If someone wants to take control of a conversation, he will be the one who will initiate a handshake. Using strong grip and pulling someone shows even greater dominance. An overly firm finger-crushing handshake might be a way to establish dominance, but it might as well be a way to hide or compensate a sense of weakness. Each of us have probably seen politicians or other leaders who use their sophisticated handshakes to show their close and intimate relationships. This gesture may include placing the left hand on someone's arm or shoulder or placing one hand on the top of the other. But let's be honest, such behavior in business or even private life can be easily treated as a sign of falsehood, insincerity or dominance. Overreaction indicates a desire to take control. And this is not always well seen, because at least in theory, cooperation and good relationships should be based on partnership. These few simple tips give you virtually endless possibilities when it comes to meeting your clients. As martial art trainers say, it's not about knowing all the techniques and punches, but to know how to do one move well and master it to perfection. Or like said Sun Tzu in The Art of War, there are no more than five cardinal tastes, yet combination of them yield more flavors than can ever be tasted. The same goes for nonverbal communication. Start by practicing a few basic gestures and when this becomes a routine, expand your repertoire with new ones. Skillful use of simple gestures allows you to influence people around you in a very sophisticated way. In combination with the right tone of voice and the energy behind these words, you will make your message extremely influential and charismatic. 
Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel, watch the next video about eye contact in sales, and see you soon.